Awesome. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Like uh, so many people for DAO governance. I mean, DAO governance sometimes feels like the subject that nobody cares about sometimes. <laughs> I think the word governance is problematic. Like nobody's ever gotten excited about the word governance. We should call it something sexier like fun decision making or something like that. Totally, yes. Well, so uh, yeah, Chris, uh, thank you so much for um, coming on for this conversation. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, and, no, no. yeah. Um, we should start by kind of like introducing ourselves, what we do in the sense of like governance. Great plan. Yeah, um, I can go, yeah. Um, so yeah, as mentioned, I work at Gitcoin. So that's like, um, it's, a, it's not a Belgian company or it is not a company, it's a DAO. So it's a decentralized autonomous organization. And um, so until very recently, I was responsible for DAO operations. Um, so DAO operations is everything that has to do with uh, the strategy, internal decision making, um, but also yeah, internal communication, our support team, all sorts of things, um, the tooling that we use. So it's it's pretty wide, and um, yeah. So that's that's why I can definitely talk talk a lot about DAO governance because how we make decisions is uh, yeah the daily bread and butter. That's me. Awesome. Um, and yeah, I work at uh, Snapshot. Who's, uh, which is also not a Belgian company. Uh, and it's sadly not a DAO either just yet. Uh, we're hoping to move towards that. And I think the subject of like increasing decentralization of your organization is, is, is definitely a big topic that we're meeting inside the company as well. And basically, we provide voting systems for loads of applications. So um, you know, last time you voted on something, it, it was quite probably snapshot, uh, a lot of different DAOs uh, like Uniswap or Aave uh, will discuss things uh, on forums and then bring these decisions to Snapshot uh, for uh, to have like a final vote and a final moment of decision making. Because uh, if we know one thing about DAOs, uh, they're not always good at fast and efficient decision making. Uh, they sometimes kind of trade that for uh, the decentralization. Um, and I guess that leads me to my first, uh, probably the first topic, which would, which would be uh, for you: What are DAOs kind of good at? How does a, what does a DAO do well? Uh, and why would you want to be a DAO uh, or a member of DAO? Yeah. So on that, I actually want to first check a little bit, like who is in the audience, like who knows what a DAO is. So can I see some hands? Like, who knows what a DAO is? OK, that's most of the people, some here in the front, don't entirely know it. But so it, it is, you could say it's a new form of organization. So yeah, as mentioned, it's a decentralized, autonomous organization. And like, as we were just talking before, and you could actually see this more as a meme than an actual thing. And that sounds a bit negative, but it's not. So a DAO can be anything and everything. It is just a new form of organization. So it can be applicable to companies. It can be applicable to organizations, uh, to companies, organizations, uh, um, the government. But it is, it is not just this fixed thing. It's a con con continuously evolving thing. And um, I, I think some of the, the key things about it is that, like, yeah, the decentralized is very important. So there is no CEO, there is no boss. Um, there's people who have roles and responsibilities and domains. Um, and it is a very fluid way of working, which has a lot of advantages. Um, transparency is, is a big one for me. Um, and also, yeah, you can hold people really accountable, which you cannot really do in your standard company or even government, which is really funny because Normally, government um, representatives are elected, but can we really hold them accountable? Not really. But in DAOs, you can do this a little bit better. Yeah, I think uh, w you know governments would probably be the most incredible things to turn into a DAO, because totally. I think uh, you, you know when you think about DAOs, you think about often the, these big organizations uh, that that people are maybe more familiar with. But uh, as we were talking about before, I, I think a DAO very often is something more like an organization that is trying to strive for decentralization, for transparency, for you know, autonomy of individual members and of the collective as a whole. Um, and this is why I think it's, it's incredibly interesting to talk about them here. Uh, it's because 
a lot of people think, oh, well, DAO, you know, that's not for me. I, I, I don't really, you know, I'm not in an organization that could be a DAO. With, with, and we didn't even start off as a DAO. I don't think it's realistic for, for me to start thinking about this. But actually, if you start thinking about it like a, like a mindset, like a set of tools, a set of uh, things you can try to uh, apply to become more transparent, more decentralized, more accountable, um, I think you can apply a lot of what DAOs are thinking about to all kinds uh, of human organizations and, and, and hopefully, I hope, uh, to public uh, organizations like governments. Yeah, totally. Um, there is so much to improve in, in any kind of organizations. Um, and like, yeah, efficiency-wise, like DAOs are not efficient. But um, I do think that, um, I hope that we evolve to a future where DAOs become a meme that takes over the world, um, not just like the tech, but also like the way of thinking, the mindset. Um, and I was, I was just like, we, we talked briefly before, and I was thinking maybe I can briefly explain like how we work as a DAO at Gitcoin to make it more tangible for people. Like That'd be super helpful. Yeah, what is a DAO? Like how does this, this is for many people I think very abstract. Um, so how are we organized as a DAO? So we are um, about, uh, I would say like, 80 full-time contributors, and then still about like 20 to 30 part-time contributors. Um, and so we have different levels of decision-making. So Gitcoin, as many as I think almost all of the DAOs, we have a token. So we have a governance token, GTC. And this token is um, used to make our biggest decisions. So that is like the top level. So how, how are we organized? We have a number of work streams. So in a in a standard organization, that would be your um, yeah, departments. So we have our product team, we have our product work stream, we have our marketing work stream, we have the operations, which, which was my, my work stream. You have like these various work streams that actually just together form our DAO. Um, but all of these work streams have a separate budget, so they make a proposal on uh, okay, for this next quarter, we just need, need a budget. Like any company, we need budget to just pay the people. And these um, budgets, whether we get them or not, this is voted on by the stewards. So who are stewards? Stewards are the people who actually get tokens delegated to them. So they are like, in a political system, they are just like the politicians, so to say they are the representatives. So we have a system where people who have acquired GTC in whatever way, um, they delegate their tokens. So they have the tokens, they're still in their possession, but they delegate it to a steward that they trust, just like you give your vote to a politician, basically. And so these stewards are very much um, like involved with Gitcoin, and they ask us the tough questions. So how does it practically go? Okay, I have a budget for our work stream for this quarter. I put it on our forum. We have a public forum that you can check out if you want to see how it goes. It's just gov.gitcoin.co. And there you just go into the budgets and you see all the budgets. So everything is very open, transparent to the public. And so the stewards, they start asking questions. They go on calls with us. They, um, they ask us the tough questions. And then we have to defend our budget and we adapt our budget. So it always starts like as a temporary budget and then it's an integrated budget. Once it's integrated, the budget goes uh, for a vote. Where does the vote happen? On snapshots. And so that's like where Nathan's organization comes in. And that's where you actually, the stewards and everyone else votes with their tokens. So many, to many stewards have like a million GTC uh, delegated to them and they vote a yes or a no. And so then if a budget passes or not, if the budget doesn't pass, we start over. So that's how decisions are made. There's no CEO, there's no one at the top who just says, we're gonna do it this or that way. We can just like fend for our own budgets. So that's the top layer. That's how the DAO keeps going every day. And then under this, you have the next layer, which is not token governed. And this we call this CSDO. So this is our cross workstream DAO operations team. So this is the workstream leads who come together and who actually, um, have tough conversations, make decisions, like what is our strategy, what are our values, where, what dire which direction are we going? And they are 
within the within the DAO, the representatives of the organization. So we then, as workstream leads, have to be accountable to our workstreams because we are not the bosses of our workstream, we are the representatives of our workstream. Practically, of course, very often we make the tough decisions and this happens still in a pretty centralized way. Um, but this is the next layer. It's also very transparent and a lot of conversation. And then you have the DAO contributors who are responsible, who have their own roles within the DAO and that works as in any organization. But so to sum it up, I think the big difference is that as an outsider, any outsider, you can have a big impact on what Gitcoin as a DAO does, the strategic direction that we go, because you can vote on our budgets directly, or you can delegate to a steward who has more impact than who you trust. And then internally, even if we still make kind of centralized decisions, um, we are very transparent about this. If you go, um, if you search, for example, on YouTube, Gitcoin transparency, you can find all our meetings. So you can just like follow along and see what, how we make decisions in this centralized meeting. And if you have questions, if you have comments, we have a forum, you can make a proposal. And that's also maybe one, one last thing on this. Anyone can make a proposal on our um, forum. So if you say like, I wanna do something for Gitcoin and it gonna, it's gonna cost you $100,000, um, but this is what I'm gonna do. This is how you can hold me accountable. This is the proposal. Let's vote on this. And this is something that happens and that we try to do more and more now that we're a really functioning organization. So that gives you a little bit of an idea how like a, a DAO functions. Gitcoin is one of the biggest DAOs in the Ethereum space um, that is, I would say, still massively dysfunctional, um, but we are getting better and better. Um, so if you want to have a little bit of an idea like how this works on a day-to-day, -day, that's that's how it stands at Gitcoin. Uh, it's, it, it's really, it's cool because I, I think we're definitely directly getting into the meter things and, and also the issues. And, and I think very often DAOs are thought to be inefficient, and I do agree with that, but all social coordination structures have their inefficiencies hidden somewhere, uh, and you know, I would say probably 95% of the world's organizations are incredibly hierarchical, mm. and these hierarchies are, are really not, you know, uh, I struggle to say more, but uh, exploiting the knowledge, the, the specificity of the expertise of each of their members. And I think what DAOs try to unleash is to try to make everyone feel like they have skin in the game and that, they, that the decisions that they're making are changing you know, at least their own financial prospects. Uh, there's a lot that comes, uh, you know, obviously like it's not all about money, but very often I think that DAOs are much better at incentivizing properly people to do their best in their, in their position. And often we have this issue of, this is very hard to translate. This beautiful idea that what a DAO can be is this you know, headless but structured organization of people flowing, exchanging, finding areas where their expertise can bring extremely valuable contributions to their organization. We think that this might happen magically. And, and, and you, you know, this is, the, the classic problem of crypto. We, we think that once you build it, it will magically happen, <laughs> you know? Oh no, adoption, yeah, it's all a matter of, of user experience. It doesn't have anything to do with the humans actually getting into it and, and liking it and, and taking it on as their own thing. And, and you know, if, if anything, I think working, in, working around DAOs uh, has been something that teaches me massively that people that are in DAOs you know, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking for a word that's less culty than religious, but yeah, it's almost a religion. It's crazy. It's uh, a cult. Yeah, it's a huge cult, but how else are you going to reinvent a social coordination structure for the world that looks better than right now? Mm. And I think so many of the issues that we're seeing in, in so many areas of the traditional world uh, would benefits so strongly from more transparency, more decentralized decision making, more accountability. Um, and if anything, I think if you're not that interested into DAOs right now because you feel like, oh, okay, that's an interesting trend, right? Like uh, it, it's, it's something. I think you should be interested just for what DAOs through this really weird experimentation that they're going through can teach your organization. 
what can you take from this really strange kind of flowy uh, horizontal structure of people? What, uh, you know, what, what lessons can you take from these uh, organizations and, and what they look like? So I think it's, it's really amazing to get you to talk about what it looks like at Gitcoin because Gitcoin probably pushed that weird experiment further than almost anyone, uh, I would say. Yeah, it's it's um, it's been fun, <laughs> and it's been it's also been a very, yeah, very much an, an exhausting experience. It's I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it is because it is very flowy. There's no clear boundaries, so that makes it exhausting. Also, like the fact of what you mentioned, like yeah, it's it's very often almost like a cult. Like people who work in DAOs, people who work in this space, they. Yeah, they're very often already pretty neurodivergent to begin with because you have to like be able to just like thrive and work in such a space. Like I work full time, um, like remote. Um, I I don't have I've never had like a really clear role. I'm always just like filling the gaps, and then a lot of people around me are doing this, and that's not that's not the easiest. It's not. Uh, it's sometimes a little bit challenging for your mental health. Um, but you're surrounded by a lot of people who really believe in what you're doing. And it's also, there's there's multiple things. Like, yeah, I, I work for a, a decentralized donation platform. So Gitcoin is doing something beautiful in the world. We're bringing a lot of organizations that we consider to be public goods that have real trouble to get funding. They got funding through our organization. So that is already a beautiful thing. So I believe, like, I'm very much consider myself to be an activist and it's like, it's a passion to, to be a part of this. But then, so that's like my skin in the game, but like apart from this, the skin in the game is indeed that governance token. Like for many people, like the, the market attributes value to these tokens. And so the fact that there's a value attribute to this and people hold these tokens, well, they're gonna hold you accountable. They're gonna ask the tough questions. And that's a good thing. It's sometimes super annoying when you're like really, massively busy and then you're like okay we already worked so hard on this budget we had all the critical question and then someone on the forum asks these basic questions in a very aggressive way then sometimes like okay let's go again let's let's start over but it's good because that it shows like oh we're not transparent enough we're not accountable enough like how can we improve ourselves how can we really be accountable and imagine a world imagine a world where politicians are like this that's just like every day they can lose their job. Every day. They're not doing a good job. Bam, they're out. Next. Who's gonna try now? Like it's not perfect either, but like imagine a system where like people can be held a little bit more accountable. And that's just like governments, but it's the same thing with organizations, with companies. Bringing this transparency, just the transparency in and by itself does so much. Like, yeah, that's that's the thing I love most about it. Yeah, I I think, you know. Especially building Snapshot, the whole goal is to get people involved into the governance process of any kind of organization they care about. And this might be a public organization, private, doesn't matter, right? And it's not, you know, um, I, I think if you push it to the absurd, it, it, becomes, uh, it becomes extremely clear what the problem with democracy is, right? Uh, you, you know, if you're in France, for the last 15 years, you've been choosing between extreme right and the other person. That's, that's the overall input of your democratic participation in your country, in a democracy. Like that, that's ridiculous. Mm. Uh, the, the amount of power of choice that you have, and let's not even talk about the technology involved for these elections, what they cost to the public, and how little, you know, how little they allow individuals to express their feelings about how a country should be run and everything. Uh, and you know, this leads to, you, know, you ask anyone these days and they're saying, Oh yeah, democracy <laughs> really sucks. Like democracy sucks. Look at you know these these other countries, uh, authoritarian countries. Uh, much easier to create economic growth. Uh, much easier to get people to stay inside during lockdown or something like that. Uh, but this is really because we've completely accepted this weird reality of democratic input into organizations we care about is extremely sparse and black and white. And I think what DAOs try to show is, no, actually, you're going to have a say in anything you care about. 
And, and this can become extremely dangerous. This can become like a cacophony of opinions that is really hard to make sense of. But that's where tooling comes in to allow the best opinions, the most well-formed, the, the best kind of discourse to create the best outcomes. And um, you know, that's at, at least at Snapshot, that's the, the kind of interactions we try to facilitate. Uh, and I think that's what DAOs, if they are to succeed, because it, it's still unproven in many ways whether DAOs have product market fit for humanity. But if DAOs end up having product market fit for humanity, it's because we managed to transform in a, uh, you know, public perception, expertise, and collective intelligence into a much more you know, representative product that current systems uh, are, are doing. Because current systems are just not doing a good job at that at all. Yeah, it's like if you just the basic thing when you think about democracy, like our current system hasn't changed for 200 years. That is surreal. Like we like we have the internet now, guys. Like notice, like there's this new thing that happened, and so we could actually make daily decisions. And so I think if you think about the concept of DAO as like, as I mentioned, like as a meme, as just like a way of thinking, there's already massive market fit product market fit it's so it, it is there it's undeniable like we, the way that we make decisions is just totally outdated and like DAO's experiment with a lot of ways of making decisions we do it still in a very simplistic way at um, at Gitcoin but we're experimenting with other things as well so the idea of just like okay you have a representative and he has tokens delegated and then we make a yes no decision the yes no decision is just one of the many things you can do so um, for example even just at snapshot like I know that like Gitcoin has worked with snapshot on implementing quadra quadratic voting so that's already like one thing uh, and that's also like at the core I don't want to make it too technical but it's, I think it's a good example of like how how you can change decision making within any organization. So um, maybe like quickly something on quadratic voting to give you an idea of, of what it is. We, um, it's actually a concept uh, that was thought out um, amongst others by Vitalik Bout Buterin, like the founder of Ethereum. And so very simply put, and I'm not a technical person, so I'm gonna say it very badly and, and Nathan is gonna correct me, but very simply put, it's like, Imagine like how, how we implement it at Gitcoin is in our system itself. If you want to donate to a good cause, and a lot of people, so I say I want to donate to this project that helps with climate change, uh, and I give one dollar. And a whole lot of other people also believe that this is important. They're also going to give one dollar. What Gitcoin does is the more people that actually vote for that project, the more that we are going to give in matching funding. So we give matching funding. The more that a community believes in something, the more extra money that we give. And that's what makes Gitcoin so special because we use this form of quadratic voting. And so this is voting to fund. And so it's the more people that believe in something, the more impact something has. So you can apply this to politics, but you can apply this to any form of decision making. And so um, we now help like Snapshot to also implement it in their voting systems because that was initially also more like a yes, no, maybe. And so like, yeah, maybe you can talk a little bit more about like how people have already used this. Yeah, um, I, I think in voting, the, the way that it uh, manifests is, is even easier to understand. It's really the idea that if you have 100 shares in a certain uh, project, DAO, uh, then your voting power is the square root of that. It's 10. And if you have four shares, then your voting power is two. So actually, the more shares you have, the less voting power, you know, it, it, it evolves on a logarithmic, um, you know, uh, line rather than uh, direct co correlation. So the way that this can be used, I think, and, and is being used uh, by a lot of companies is simply saying, well, because of the fact that tokens tie governance rights to ownership of the project and to let's see if, uh, you, you know, if it ever happens, but to revenues generated by the project is really problematic because that, that can mean that very often huge VCs, for example, that invested massively very early on in a project's life are going to kill its governance. And they can't do much about it. They, they, they're just going to kill its governance by being the biggest actor that in no way, shape, or form can be contested by uh, other DAO participants. Mm -hmm. And 
I think that quadratic voting is a way to untie a little bit that ownership from the governance rights. Um, yeah, it takes away the centralized power, right? Because yeah. now, like, as shareholders of a company, you can be like, oh, we're just going to, like, band together. And because you do, the impact of your vote will totally supersede the impact of, like, this one whale shareholder. And that makes, yeah, that really changes everything. You know, uh, from talking to, to, to you know, companies in the real world, I, I remember we were talking to this Swiss company that has four founders and, and really wanted to implement a voting system for its general assemblies. And the idea was, the problem is the four founders together hold about 66% of the equity of the company. Uh, and you know this was becoming a big company, 85 people, I think. Uh, and they really wanted more input. But people didn't participate because they didn't feel like their vote had any impact. And it obviously didn't, right? So they implemented quadratic voting to make sure that you know, they still have their shares because they wanted to keep them. That's their financial skin in the game. But they didn't want to still be the people to make all these major decisions. Uh, and, 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 you know, uh, quadratic voting has worked extremely well for them to kind of untie these two different things. And I, I think the more we try, sh the, sorry, we try stuff out uh, in, in DAOs that looks like this, the more we can influence regular organizations to. Uh, understand these mechanisms and start to use them internally. Because what's evidently clear is that when you feel like you have no impact, you don't participate. Mm -hmm. And a lack of participation is not just a problem because uh, the numbers don't look as good, there's not as many people participating. A lack of participation means a lack of collective input into the product that a certain organization is creating or the, you know, it doesn't have to be a product all the time, right? But you want people to feel involved, and you want them to give their best to your organization. And for hierarchies, I think it's very hard, and we're realizing that. And we're seeing like the the the, the, the signs of it: the quiet quitting, the you know, the people just feeling like I'm working for this new and exciting company, but it's so big that I feel completely faceless and impactless. And if there's one thing that we can try to change with DAOs. It's that feeling, and you know, if we do that, we unlock collective intelligence, and collective intelligence is just so powerful. So, the wisdom of the crowds. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think we unlock that? How do you think we, how do you think we get companies to realize the merits and the the interesting things that are being done in DAOs, and to try to apply, you know, how do we get a Cross the chasm. We had a we had like a big offsite with the snapshot team, and we were all wondering like, how do we get people outside Web three to take these tools on and, and and you know apply them by being here by talking about it. Yeah. So like if if you feel that like this could be interesting for your organization, or if you are just like for society in general, like yeah, stick around, ask our questions, look up what something like Snapshot or Gitcoin, what we are doing, and just like dive in, start reading, ask questions, join the forums, join the Discord. It's a like, horrible tool, but everyone's on Discord, and that's where we have chats, and you can just like join and ask all the questions and see how we work on a daily basis. And then hopefully it will inspire some people to actually be like, hey, this could actually be, they could be onto something. And it's not perfect. And that's the thing, like in general, with anything that has to do with blockchain, like there is the narrative in the media, what blockchain is about. Uh, there's a narrative of like, it's just tokens. It's all about like, it's just securities. It's just like another financial fun game. Well, it is not. That is the little secret that people who actually work in blockchain can tell you about. It is really technology that can change the world in a way that, yeah that is so impactful. I deeply believe in this. Like, how do you change, how do you bring systemic change to all the injustices and all the things that don't make sense? And that could be like, indeed, like on a simple or, or on a basic level for you personally, like I'm in my company and I'm really burnt out because nothing makes sense and I don't have an impact, but it can also be on a higher level of like, okay, just like what's happening in this country or this war or this famine, whatever, it doesn't make sense and we know what is wrong, but we cannot change it because it's just the system. Well, you can actually change the system. And so like if you get in there and you like try to 
understand what this mindset can bring, then you can participate it and in it and also make it better because it is it is bad. There's like <laughs> there's a lot to be fixed, but it's it's a mindset. It's a way of looking at the world and seeing like, hey, we all have something to bring. We all have something co to contribute. I deeply believe in this. Like we all should, like on just like a spiritual level, we should all thrive as human beings. And like, why not build a system where we actually could all contribute something and not just like the people who have the loudest voice, who have like the most money, that makes no sense to me. And so DAOs are just a first initiative, a first trial. Um, so that's where, where we should start. Yeah, no, totally agree. Uh, by the way, we're not saying that DAOs obviously do this that much better right now, mm -hmm. but I think we're building the, 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 the technology and the experimentation needed to get to that point. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the, you know, the issues in the world are, are changing so quickly and you're looking at most issues also being global, most big stakeholders being super, uh, multinational, uh, you know, let's not even talk about like the huge tech companies and everything. And if you're looking at the tooling that we have right now, and uh, I know that yesterday's subject was regulation, how do you regulate a Google? I, I, I personally, I think it's almost impossible. Y you know, who's going to nationalize Google, right? <laughs> the United States, what, what, what? <laughs> it, like, makes no sense whatsoever. So, for me, the only possibility to start thinking about these global issues in a way where we can try to solve them collectively, with all the accountability and checks and balances and everything is through this new type of digital collective organization. And it doesn't have to be called DAOs. Like, or genuinely, I personally don't really like the word DAO that much because it makes people think like a DAO is that. And we should really be thinking about digital communities, communities that coordinate through the internet, through technologies provided by the internet, and whether it's blockchains or something else, who cares, right? Uh, these are tools, and, and, and what we're building at, at, at Snapshot, what you're building at Gitcoin, these are just tools. They can be used for good and bad, and Axe is a great tool to cut wood, terrible tool if you cut heads. Uh, doesn't matter. But I think the tooling that we're building right now has the potential to be useful to solve some of these uh, global issues. Yeah, totally. And it's indeed like, it's, it's this combination of um, if you build unstoppable tools that cannot be like censored, uh, that are very transparent, and you combine that with organizations, even if they're imperfect, that like have that same vibe, then you like slowly, yeah, can come up with something that you like just put under the existing systems. And in the end, you end up with just like people using another app, like a dream can be in the future, like how do we make decisions in Belgium about certain things? Well, you just have a Tinder-like app and you swipe left or right if you believe in it. And it's like, it's just like a little game, but like the crowd can actually have an impact on things and it's a signal. We just have, need a lot more of these signals and empowering of the people and DAOs can help there. Um, on that, 100%. yeah, right? And on that note, like maybe you should like see if there's a... I was thinking the same thing. Some questions of like talk, talking about empowering people and the contributions, like questions. Do you want a mic or are you okay? Thank you so much. Very interesting talk. Uh, just to preface, uh, so I'm a contributor to Impactopia and we want to be a platform to bridge the world of DAOs and cooperatives and other collectives. And we actually received our first funding through the last Gitcoin beta rounds. Uh, so that was a really great experience. <laughs> um, but I, I just had a question because uh, traditional cooperatives, they're known for prioritizing the mental health and well-being of their members. How, as a DAO, can you foster a sense of community and provide mentorship to your stewards, members, and so on in a digital context? Oh, well, it's a really good question, and it's one of my favorite topics. So if we get another hour, I can like talk about this. Um, but no, it's, it's, a, it's such an important thing, and it, it, I think all DAOs actually underestimate this. Um, like Most of the organizations just discovered this because of COVID, like how can you do the remote work and what is the impact on people? Um, but yeah, I've been living like this for the past five years, just working remote. And it is 
a challenge to really like take care of the people. So it was definitely a, a, a big part of my job as well to like have someone in the team who's really constantly looking like how can we take care of the people. So we have we have multiple things. We have, for example, at Gitcoin we have a budget for which we just call for for ease, like we call it professional development. But it's all sorts of coaching that can help you on a daily basis. We've um, had a person who was uh, who was specialized in conflict resolution. Um, we have um, multiple hours a week that's like something we had, something a gathering hour where you bring people together and we talk to, just talk about random stuff. So like we, and next to this, we try to organize at least once a year a team retreat that we all get together, which is very expensive to us because we work all over the world and it's not easy. But it's so beautiful. Um, yeah, we were in nature uh, in Denver, in, close to Denver in Boulder um, last year. And those are these moments that you're just like, OK, I have all these tensions built up because of this, of this. And then like you see, like you just like connect with the people. And like it does a lot. Like It gives me personally energy for an entire year. Um, but it's really important to take care of your people because, yeah, the DAO is the people. So thank you for the question. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I would say that those are trying to uh, are really taking two problems on, right? That they're, they're doing horizontal organizations with unclear leadership structures and fully remote at the same time. And neither of these has really been fixed, right? Like nobody really got either of these super super right. And those are trying to do the two at the same time in the crypto industry. So, you know, I think we're all a bit crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think we need like 10% of people working at a DAO should be specialized in this. So especially people who come from corporations who know how important this is should flow into DAOs. Like we were just talking about, is DAOs are so developer centric and it's like you don't know how people work and we need to focus on how people actually thrive. So we need we need a lot more specialists in this coming in. So that that's definitely a point. I saw a question there and there. I think yeah. Johnny maybe? I'll I'll give you my mic. <laughs> um just the perspective from both of you on um you know when we had DeFi summer and comp token and the on-chain governance module, which we then discovered made interacting with governance votes very expensive, you know, spawned the, the birth of of what we've got now, snapshot, which is almost the industry norm for, for governance voting. Uh, and and I, I think that's a pro and a con, but, but we're getting less protocol DAOs because they don't need to Im implement on-chain uh, effect to the governance vote. So, so now we've had a proliferation of, of different DAOs that are not, not even working on a protocol. Just your comments and predictions around that and, and what you might see next. Yeah, uh, yeah. maybe I'll, uh, I'll respond first. Uh, it, it's really interesting because for some reason we decided that systems that you start adopting very early on as a DAO should not change through the evolving of your organizations. And we'd never think that anywhere else, right? We'd never think, nah, let's just add another person and change nothing about the way we work. It's, it's going to be fine. And then you add another and another and another, and you're 80 people. You have the same system for decision making than you used to have. Uh, and, and that obviously doesn't work. And for a long time, I don't think it was that visible that it didn't work uh, because DAOs were just not mature enough. But now DAOs are getting more mature, and they're thinking, you know, to get back to your question, you know, they were using snapshot voting. Uh, and that was fine. And then they were using a multi-sig like uh, Gnosis Safe. Uh, I'm sure you all, you all know it. Like, uh, you know, the, the DAO was working on something on Snapshot. And then from that information, a multi-sig was saying, all right, let's execute it. And that's obviously not the level of decentralization that we want to push or, or, or strive for, because you're still adding a human back into something where we said the whole goal is when the collective makes a decision, it happens. Um, and so that's what we're working on right now at Snapshot. We, we spent the last uh, year and a half now working on an on-chain uh, framework that allows people to start off their life as a DAO, taking a few decisions with uh, an off-chain platform. And then when they get big enough, when they get like Gitcoin level, where not only you really want to remove humans from the, uh, from, from the whole governance flow 
the, uh, let's say, the execution of governance decisions, you want to remove them, one, because centralized, you know, those humans could change their mind, those humans could try to steal the money or something, but even in terms of liability, uh, because if you're the one that pushed the button, I want to deploy that smart contract, and something really bad happens with that smart contract, you don't want to be the person liable. So what we're building is a way for DAOs to, when they started off with off-chain voting, move on really seamlessly to on-chain voting that removes that. And there's risks to on-chain voting. We saw it again with the Tornado Cash hack recently. There's risk to on-chain voting, and it's going to have to be done well. And that's why it <laughs> took us 18 months to <laughs> get to something where we're thinking, all right, this won't break anything, and this will probably work the way we intended it to work. Uh, but, but I think you really have to think of DAO tooling as something that evolves with your organization, follows it, and, and can, when your DAO gets to the level of maturity where you would really hope all DAOs to strive and reach, they still have the right tooling to make these decisions in a way that is free, you know, that is accessible, that is, uh, you know, that is not excluding smaller participants in a DAO. Uh, because obviously, like paying ten dollars for on-chain voting, uh, that's not a vibe. That's that's not that's not okay. So yeah, the, fir the you know look out for Snapshot X. <laughs> that's going to be uh, still free to use, uh, developed by that guy. Uh, you know, if it doesn't work, blame him. <laughs> um, and and, uh, and yeah, but but definitely awesome question. Uh, I think exactly you hit the nail on the head. Thank you. Do we have another question? Actually, I do have a question for you. So since maybe you know I work with regulation, and I'm very curious to hear your opinion on regulators trying to regulate DAOs, because we know it's not under regulation yet. But what are your thoughts on them trying to find a way to, to regulate the market? Well, I think, I think it's a very interesting time. Um, we, are, we are in a period of transition, and that's a good thing. Um, I missed I missed the conversations on regulation uh, yesterday, so Nathan can definitely talk a lot more about this. Um, but I would say like it's it, it's just needed. In the beginning, I was very much um, I was a hardcore Taoist. Um, it's also like somewhere here on my sweater, um, and like I do believe that it's important for Daos to to be unstoppable um, because the existing systems. Uh, the bigger that we will become, the more impact that we will have, the more that they will attack us. And I do think like that we need to change the system. So if you think about things like um, like MakerDAO or Uniswap, or the, like basically the entire DeFi um, ecosystem, it has its flaws, but it has also fantastic things in the making, like cutting out the middleman and like. Honestly, like I don't know. I hope I'm not offending anyone here in the audience, but we really do not need banks. We don't need notaries. We don't need banks. We don't need any of these things. We can do this ourselves on the big uh, on the blockchain, and we can do it in a way more transparent and honest way. So that's why blockchain is a fantastic thing for every human on Earth. So like I really believe that we need to be unstoppable, and like where is the power? It is with the banks. It's with the fin financial institutions. So. Do we need to be regulated? Yes, we need to be regulated in a way that we can protect the people on all sides, people who participated in it. So, um, so that we can also actually, if you don't regulate us, if there's no some sort of regulation, it's pretty easy to take us down, just like put us all in jail. That's actually that simple. So like, I think we need some regulation, um, but for me, it's regulation to protect the people, both people who are working in the ecosystem and people who use the tools. So in that sense, like yeah, I think that that's my very simplistic view on it, uh, Nathan. Well, I mean, um, I, I definitely think that there's a tension uh, that comes from the lack of sometimes quality uh, that comes out uh, in in these new laws that don't understand really what what they're talking about, and and from that frustration, you get I think a pretty prevalent opinion of, oh, but it's okay, just build something truly unstoppable. You know, if your DAO is really fully decentralized, who are they going to hold accountable for? Shouldn't we build something, you know, blockchains are a, a, an absolutely terrible tool, tool for anonymity, but they don't have to be. They could become way more anonymous. 
But I think, even though I sympathize strongly with uh, that vision, I think it doesn't lead to DAOs having the full potential that they can have. And obviously, this is going to be a, a tough fight, because incumbents have no reason whatsoever to want to push this. Like, <laughs> not at all. A and if we have to imagine a world where DAOs are as successful as we think they can be, then we have to imagine a world where the regulation is smarter, well-informed, and I think in many ways lighter uh, than it is today. But still, no clarity, no global adoption. I, I don't think you can do without uh, regulation. And, and I'm, you know, personally, un tien vaut mieux que deux tu l'auras, in many, in many senses. I, I think we, we really need some amount of clarity on what is a DAO, does a DAO's decision have you know, a, a legal, you know, a completely a, a legal, I, I want to say, say, I forget the word, not personality, obviously, but yeah. Uh, does a DAO have a legal personality? Can you create service agreements uh, between a DAO and, uh, and a company? All of this obviously is like very important and, and we need to make sure that it's possible, else DAOs will not reach the kind of potential that we hope they can have. Yeah, and I think we, we just need to trust people that uh, on all sides, that like, that, that's, it's never black and white. There's so much nuance on all sides, and you can indeed not assume like, okay, the companies or the whatever, like, or the regula regulatory systems, they just want to like kill us. That is not the case per se. Um, but like, just sit at the table together and have conversations. And I think that's why like, um, meetups like these are extremely important. So really appreciate being here. Yeah. And um, it's the good news that there's a lot of fantastic people even in this room working on making sure that this will go well. But generally, I do not want that job. Blood, sweat, <laughs> and tears. Yeah, respect, respect. <laughs> respect. OK, I think, I think yeah, we had uh, a last question a here. Time. Uh, but okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much oh, for perfect. your presentation. Oh. Um, I believe in changing the world in uh, smaller steps, uh, perhaps with the proje projects that I often manage. And the recent project that I managed was brought together three blockchains, two of which from the largest ports in Europe. Now, with blockchains, the difficulty is that everybody wants to keep their data. And in logistics, nobody wants to say anything to anyone. So I thought about a DAO. We could somehow make it automated. And so I started reading. Obviously, I don't know as much as you do, Chris and, and, and Nathan. And I, I, I found some step backs, that there some, some difficulties. And, and of course, the regulation, I, I understand where you're coming from, Chris, because there's some lot of stupid regulation around. But regulation brings legal, legal security. And so my, what I would like you to perhaps speak in the last few minutes, and I don't want to, is on, on these limitations of the DAOs as they stand at the moment, and how they could be perhaps resolved or, 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 or um, uh, diminished in order to be able to be used perhaps not to change the whole world, but perhaps in these large-scale projects where there is 30, 40 partners and the traditional ways of deciding are often rather um, difficult. Th th thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, um, I think, again, uh, I'm coming back on something I, I said a bit earlier, that you think about, uh, if you start thinking about DAOs as this, as this one thing, that it needs to be, that, that, that it seems like people on Twitter are saying that it, it is, uh, then you're kind of, you're setting yourself up to be disappointed by the lack of proper tooling and the lack of proper best practice sharing to get that going and to get that working for an actual project. Uh, and what you should be looking at is, how can I make decision making in my organization that might still look like a corporation more decentralized, more transparent, more autonomous, more ready to take into account the, the, the opinions of individuals and to make sure that these opinions, the, the really good ones, rise to the top and shape the organization. So maybe when you think about how, you know, it, it's super exciting to think I'm going to build a DAO, but sometimes it makes more sense to start off being a company, and, and Snapshot is exactly in the same situation as you are. 
We started off as a company. The goal is progressive decentralization, but starting off with, uh, with full decentralization, even myself, as someone who's, you know, quite close to DAO and quite financially interested to tell you DAOs are amazing, would strongly recommend against it. I, I don't think it, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's doable at the moment. I think it will be one day, but at the moment, I don't think it is. Yeah, I agree. Like, um, as you said yourself, like, take, go step by step and, like, use, use um, the things that you discover by looking into DAOs, use it maybe as just inspiration in your organization. Also, like, how do corporations work? Like, what are the tools they use? Um, like, I'm personally a big fan of the concept of holacracy or holacracy, um, where, where you just do more of, like, integrative decision making and you get together as a group, but indeed, you do not have to be a DAO immediately and be like, okay, everything is on chain. Because then you realize, especially with a big group, like, okay, we're just getting stuck. We spent yet an entire day on just like talking and not getting anything done. And in the end, you want to get things done. So take it step by step and we all learn from each other. So that's what it's about. Plus one on the holacracy. And, and also like if you're looking at uh, you know, resources out there on how to make decisions as a DAO. It's quite thin still today. I mean, the, 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 you know, the, the DAOs are really young and, and there's not a lot of best practice sharing going on. However, if you're looking at resources on how a holacratic organization functions, uh, that is plentiful. And, you know, uh, and that's why we have so much to learn from these organizations, from cooperatives. Uh, uh, you know, cooperatives are something that can teach so much to DAOs. But again, we're still very early on in that, in that technology and, and we haven't been able just yet to take on all of this knowledge that comes from decades of people experimenting with collective decision making uh, and applying it to the world of DAOs. Yeah, maybe one, one final plug on that. Like, also, it helps to be like in physically with those people. Like, and Belgium is a small country. Our Blockchain ecosystem isn't that big, but I would um, recommend to uh, to everyone here like look up uh, Regions Unite. They're in Brussels and they organize a lot of events, um, and they are a DAO. And it's really beautiful to see how they started from nothing. They have a place called Citizens Corner, so it's here in Brussels as well, and they do a lot of like blockchain meetups. Um, so that's a good place to start as well if you want to go in and see how a DAO in Belgium functions. Any questions left? No. Ah. Yeah, but uh, just just to make sure, yeah, there's nobody after us, right? So it's fine. Awesome. Uh, you mentioned product market fit for humanity. When do you see like policymakers and those decision kind of situation? Do you ever see that in a in a DAO kind of form, or would it always be ministers and and? The, just the, 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 the politicians deciding it, not via DAO mechanisms, but more of the centralized decisions? Well, I think first that there's a few problems that crypto as a whole has to fix, right? Accessibility, ease of user experience, understandability, uh, you know, even the fact that if you want to participate in this new crazy world that we're in, you better speak English, else I don't know what you're going to do. You know, all of this needs to be fixed if you want to get to a level where one day we will be able to use tools for collective decision making, you can call it DAO tools if you want, at a level like a government. Um, and I think, you know, from even talking to uh, government actors and everything, you, you know, sometimes I'm like, we can all agree that the, the current system for voting is terrible, right? And it would be much better to vote on your phone. And then I received, no, but no, it's awful, voting on your phone, what, what are you talking about? How is my great grandma gonna vote on her phone? And then in the US, they queue for six hours and have to take a day off on a Tuesday, uh, else you can't participate. So I think for, you know, in many ways, we're like not that far away from a few key UX, uh, you know, user experience things that will allow the kind of accessibility that is necessary for DAOs to become a real world thing. You know, we, we recently had a new hire a Snapshot and the guy wanted to bring, uh, to use Snapshot with his, uh, with his sports team. Uh, and, and we were kind of thinking like, oh, how are you gonna bring that out and how are you gonna use that? And then you're like, yeah, so first tell them all to download MetaMask. 
and then tell them all to get a KYC account on an exchange to get a little bit of ETH. And then when they've got that little bit of ETH, you're going to send them all an NFT that represents blah, blah. And you're like, 25 minutes later, you finished explaining what would be needed. And 25 days later, maybe that's up and running. But like, that's ridiculous, right? Um, but I think we're actually not that far away from uh, for that. I, I'm very hopeful that uh, technologies like uh, layer twos and account abstraction are going to fix that problem. Yeah, and I think it's also going to be... Um I, I thinking of two things is like we we still need, and like for for many people it's like oh blockchain has been around for so long like what have they done they're they're nowhere, but I do think, at some point very soon something is gonna be just like, you know, an app a thing that just like takes over the world, I personally hope it's gonna be like the new Twitter, <laughs> like I want I want better social media I think we're basically committing suicide as a society if we're not getting better at communicating and sharing information with each other with a lot of nuance and context. But that's my personal rant on this. Um, but like, if we have this, the rest will follow. It's like people will just like get these tools. These tools will evolve quicker, quicker because more money is going to flow in and things are going to go faster. I think that's one thing. I think, again, events like these, um, like. I hope next year there's going to be even more people, and I hope it's going to be filled with also like lots and lots of journalists. I think that's a very important thing. Um, also, yeah, decision makers in general who actually really are in politics or in big companies because they believe that the world could potentially become slightly better. Like have those people in here, and like let them experience firsthand by having conversations with the people like what this is actually about. Because if when you check in the media this is not what blockchain is about. And it's like one of my personal biggest gripes. It's like, no, it's not just about trading and all these things. And and we need just more people to understand this and more nuanced communication on this and things will go faster. And I think we're very close to it. Yes, on, you want to add something? No, 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 I was gonna say thank you. Yes, on that final note, thank you the audience for your question. Thank you, Chris and Nathan for this insightful conversation. So we can, we can applaud them. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and you know, uh, coming to the last talk of the day and listening for you know close to an hour to people talk about something so new and weird, like thank you so much for like taking the time. Thank you.